Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel here today to reflect on yesterday's historic, amazing uh, Champions League match. I hope uh, you guys managed to catch it, all the highlights at least, the Real Madrid, Man City, creme de la creme, you know, just top class football all around. Uh, maybe not so much as defending, but yeah, um, the two teams uh, that are in the final, of course, as we know, the two teams that beat Inter in the Champions League, uh, Liverpool and Real Madrid. And, um, you know, there's the imaginary trophy for us, the imaginary, uh, we played well against the Champions League finalist trophy. Uh, but it's something, it's something to, you know, at least um, not brag about, but to be, to be happy that, you know, we gave the two best teams in Europe this season a really good game. Um, you know, when you think back to the Real Madrid game, especially the first one, at home at San Siro, like we were the superior team for majority of the match, but we just couldn't take our chances and they punished us. Uh, the second match, obviously, Barella's um, head, uh, head loss moment costed us as well. Uh, then they just kind of solve it with individual moments of brilliance that Crows shot from outside the box, then the Sensio. Um, Liverpool, of course, we know. Uh, you know, the, the margin was probably closer than the match reflected, but overall we played quite well against Liverpool as well. And if, you know, Alexis Sanchez's red card uh, didn't happen, we don't, you don't know what could have happened. But, you know, the main thing, the main thought that comes to me when I'm watching these teams is just, you know, the substitutes. These teams are able to change the match with their substitutes. They're, they have game-changing substitutes, which is the main thing that this Inter team doesn't have, you know, the starting 11 is, is able to give a good run, a good match to any team in Europe. But it's just that as Liverpool, they were struggling against the Villarreal, who did they bring on? Luis Diaz, 50 something million signing in January. Same against Inter as well, they brought on Luis Diaz and they changed the match in the first match as well. They're able to do that match changing substitute Real Madrid. Camavinga against us when he came on, he changed the match. Rodrigo, this guy always goes against us. He came against Man City, changed the match. Camavinga running past their tired legs. We don't have any of those types of substitutes. We know that once, once uh, you know, Barella Hakan come off, if it's Vecino, Vidal, Gagliardini, they're able to make an impact of sorts, um, but they're not able to change the match positively for sure. And they don't add the rhythm for sure. And that's another difference between a lot of the Italian teams to the Premier League teams and La Liga teams. The, the rhythm of the match sometimes is um, they're not able to cope with it. So that's, um, you know, the, 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 that's the two kind of main takes I took away from, uh, from this uh, Champions League campaign. And, you know, we're on the path into, as Inter fans, you guys know we're not at that level. We're definitely not we're near that elite level, but we're not that far off as the matches proved and at the same time we're not in the financial position unfortunately to actually implement those changes or being able to address those changes which is a shame but at the same time I don't feel like you know as we're talking about the substitutes it's about just being a little bit more smarter with money now the Conte project is over the Conte bring me Vidal Kolarov like you know these older experienced players like right to win right now that project is gone and i think what needs to happen now is you know obviously we've got marotta at the home but have more auxilio influence than marotta influence so more scouting influence um more smarter buys and it is possible you know you look at our team already right now brozovic where was he bought from you know he was a six eight million signing uh from croatia and it's taken him time to get to that level. Skriniar from Sampdoria, you know, not these are not break the bank signings when we signed Handanovic from Udinese, D'Ambrosio, um, you know, Matty Dams. These these kind of you know smart signings that are not you know high wages or high cost transfer fee. Um, it's about you know good scouting and making smarter decisions on the on the transfer market. You know. Uh, Milan are a great example right now and I'm not just using Milan now because they look like they might be on the way to a Scudetto but I have been a fan of this Milan project for the last couple of years showing that you don't need to be outspending the other teams to win in fact they managed to cut their wages almost in half and being even better than they were before so it is possible 
So it's, it's but it's a very difficult summer up ahead for Auxilio, Marotta and Co. But it's possible. I think this inter team, I think we showed this in Europe this year that we we're probably the most European team as well. Like the way the Inzaghi's football is, you know, very suited to European football. But we just need a few more pieces in the to complete the puzzle. Um, we don't have the money to do it, but yeah, let's see what these guys are able to cook up in the summer. But yeah, what did you guys make of the uh, the, the Real Madrid and the Man City match? You know, I, I, it was a great match, but you know, one thing I really took away as well from Real Madrid was Pintus. Pintus! My God, I missed that guy. The uh, If you guys don't know who he is, but you should know who he is because he's the GOAT of physical trainers. He is the fitness trainer that was there under Antonio Conte for two years for us. He was Real Madrid for the 3P under Zidane. Um, he's been all over the place in his career, but you know, you saw a video on social media, Modric literally singling out Pintus and hugging him and kissing him and saying, El Metodo Pintus, the Pintus method, which is, you know, famed for its difficulty and its strictness and almost military level uh you know regime but you see the effects of you know look at modric at 36 years old still you know this looking better than he ever has you know physically athletically that real madrid team was able to go toe to toe with that man city team and yeah you know when we always talk about you know conte left of course uh lukaku hakimi ericsson all these those are all massive pieces that left but pintus was a massive loss as well um so you know it was it was painful to watch him uh, being uh, making such an impact into into the team. But yeah, those were my takeaways. Let me know your thoughts down below. What you make in, of uh, my thoughts on you know more Auxilio, slightly less Marotta. Let me know in the comments below. As always, guys, keep a lookout on the channel. Empoli preview later today. Ciao ragazzi, always Forza Inter.